The following is a special presentation of Fox 31 and our ongoing commitment to the military. Serving those who serve. This is Sterling Correctional Facility, a big prison on Colorado's eastern plains. It is a labyrinth of concrete and razor wire that serves as home to 2,500 felons. I'm here on a second degree murder charge. I was convicted of second degree murder back in 2001. I was in a drunk driving accident, a tragic accident that took the lives of two other people. I'm in here for a vehicular homicide and a vehicular assault. But on the edge of this prison yard, inside this building, something different is happening. What do you see back in there? You see men again. You see dignity back in their lives again. And that's just the start. <laughs> this is not your normal prison unit. Inside a hundred men preparing for life after prison, holding each other to a higher standard, just as they did when they served in the military. The guys that are assigned to that unit want to be as proud of themselves and have the same self-respect that they did have when they were in the military. And they kind of hold each other accountable and lift each other up to accomplish that. It is a unique experiment, offering veterans hope in a place that once seemed hopeless. No one's looking for a handout. They just want a chance. They want redemption. We've got a motto in here, and that's get out and stay out. Tonight, the unconventional new approach that is seeing radical results right here inside Unit 32. Hello, I'm Jeremy Hubbard coming to you tonight from inside the barbed wire at the largest prison in the state of Colorado. We're in the yard here at Sterling Correctional Facility, home to nearly 2,500 inmates. What you may not know is that many of the men serving time here once served their country. They are inmates with a unique set of challenges, but also a unique opportunity because of a unique program. They call it Unit 32, the Veterans Unit. Storm clouds gather on this late summer day over the yard at Sterling Correctional Facility, where inmates clad in prison whites pass the time with bench presses and barbells. But look closely amid the dark skies and you'll see a rainbow, and just maybe a metaphor for what's going on behind this door, where few are allowed to enter, and where those who do get to experience a little bit of the life they used to know. It's not exactly a barracks. But it could pass for one, with the American flag unfurled outside, military insignias stenciled on the walls, nameplates on each cell door, boasting the inmates' branch of service. We put a tag on our, on our door, U.S. Army, U.S. Navy. It's another little pride thing. This is the Veterans Unit at Sterling, a cell block unlike any other in the state of Colorado. It has been just life-changing, obviously. My attitude has changed. My behavior will is changed forever, but more importantly, the uh, sense of self-worth, self-pride is back. For the past 19 years, a sparsely filled prison cell is the only home 70-year-old Daryl Walker has known, and he knows it's his fault. I uh, shot a man in a fit of drunken anger, rage, and Unfortunately, the man didn't survive, and I'll, I'll be sorry about that for the rest of my life. Uh, innocent man shouldn't have, shouldn't have died. An Army veteran who served in Vietnam before his life took a violent turn. I think about it every day. Daryl was enlisted once again recently, this time by prison officials who'd been researching just how many veterans are behind the razor wire at penitentiaries all across the country. The numbers are staggering. Found in the nation, the average veteran population in prisons ranged from 8 to 10 percent. That's about 200,000 veterans incarcerated nationwide, about 1,400 veterans in Colorado currently behind bars. Many of those coming out of the military dealing with physical pain, traumatic brain injuries, mental health problems, and PTSD, followed by a history of bad decision making and violent behavior. I would never tell you any of that excuses the felonies they committed, and they would tell you the same thing, but it certainly contributed to them. Do we know when well, this might be happening? Whatever brought them here. Matching. Yeah. Something needed to be done while they're here, a different approach. So officials at Sterling decided to follow the lead of states like Virginia, Florida, and Georgia. And a year and a half ago, they opened Unit 32, the first ever veterans ward at Sterling. 
a unit separated from the rest of the prison population with very strict rules. This right here uh, is a pledge that we give to all the veterans that show up here. And lots of accountability. Basically, it's a pledge that states, I've fallen, but I haven't failed. Every inmate who moves in has to adhere to an honor code, promising not to lie, cheat, or steal, to treat others as they'd like to be treated, show respect, take responsibility. Uh, failure is a big uh, deal to a veteran, uh, anybody in the military. We don't take it very well. We're always trained to uh, figure out whatever we got to do to complete our objective. and. Uh, so coming to prison is a really big hit, uh, as you can imagine. And with that responsibility, the reward of being treated like they're part of the solution and not part of the problem. This is a picture of all the vets. Our first two months in here, uh, we all went outside and they allowed us to take a picture together, which was uh, unheard of at the time. Everybody that's gone to the parole board since the inception of this unit has been granted parole. Wow. Yes. That says something. That does say something. Daryl is one of the founding members of the Veterans Unit. Prison staff relied on him and others to make it work and to help new arrivals. I've become sort of a mentor to some of the younger vets that are coming in and, and trying to get them back on the straight and narrow. These guys, when somebody first shows up here, Walker and several others, actually welcome the guy. That doesn't happen in prison often. They make sure he has everything he needs. These guys all look out for each other. You know, once you get used to that kind of stability and structure that the military has, and you get kind of released into society, you don't know how to act. Guys like Levi here, who served eight years in the Army, did a tour in Iraq and another in Afghanistan, and was injured in an IED blast. Then he came home and got caught up in drugs. But I take full responsibility and I deserve to be here. And William, who suffered a traumatic brain injury in Iraq, he came home and was convicted of vehicular homicide four years ago. There's never going to be a right because I can never bring that victim back. But I just hope that the victim's family can see that I'm doing everything to the best of my ability to make positive changes. Like right here, these plants were dead. Prison officials say one of the keys to making positive changes is making this place seem less like prison and more like home in big ways and small. There's a nice zucchini right there, my friend. Oh, Look at that. Good. On the outside, the veterans have their own private space, a back patio, where they've started a vegetable garden. I'm from the city. I never saw nothing like that. They're growing their own food. I can show you some pictures in here that, that we took when it was nothing but a field here. With seeds they actually saved from the fruits and vegetables they're served at lunch in the prison cafeteria. I was actually surprised at the number of men that have never planted anything in their lives. May not seem like a big deal, but it is. And that's what this program is about. You know, even though we're still in prison, but it kind of gives us a head start, you know, kind of puts us back into normal life before you get back into normal life. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing normal about being behind this fence and all this, but to be able to come out and, and show that we can, you know, have some pride and some respect you know, that we, we trying to do right. My current parole plan, let's, uh, let's make sure we have all the information. Seeds of hope are what's taking root on the inside, where they've got support. I'll make sure our facility parole officer's on board with this. I'll explain to him what's going on. Help from professionals and volunteers, and a crash course in getting ready for life Everybody's after prison. Once we get that final approval, then we can go forward and let the parole board know where we're at. After nearly two decades behind bars, Daryl is about to be a free man. He has networked with one of the other guys that actually helped us get this program going. Um, he's going out to a job. He's already put a down payment on the place he's going to live. And a lot of that networking was a direct result of this program. Of course, no part of the program can prepare him for some of what's in store next. I've never held a smartphone or a laptop or anything like that. I'm somewhat concerned. <laughs> I, you know, failure is not an option for me. So uh, I will do whatever it takes to successfully complete the parole. But I, I will be honest and say there's a little bit of fear and trepidation uh, of, of success. But if success means becoming the kind of man he was in the military, Daryl and dozens of others in Unit 32 have already succeeded. The goal now is to spread the experiment to other segments of the prison population, giving those inmates who are willing to do some real heavy lifting the chance that comes with changing your life and lifting the dark cloud that has hovered for so long. So that maybe one day they too can experience what it's like to drive past that razor wire fence, leaving behind the only life 
you've known for so long. It's the first van ride he's been where he's not cuffed up. And get the chance to start over. There he is. <laughs> Lay it down, buddy. I'm doing good. <laughs> good, to good to see you, big boy. Oh, I love you. Just like Daryl is. I'm close to tears. Uh, it's been a long time, and uh, let's not forget that uh, what brought me here. I wish I could tell them how sorry I am. Uh, that's somebody I'll never forget. I'll never forget that the reason that brought me here, and that I've used that over the years as a catalyst to change my life. And from that point on, I've done everything that I can to change the man that I was into the man that I am now, and uh, hopefully for the better. Welcome back as we come to you from inside Sterling Correctional Facility, where more than 100 inmates are housed in Unit 32, the Veterans Unit. We were struck by one of the young men we met here. Carl Cumby is his name. He has had a difficult past and hopes to forge an optimistic future. I'm here because uh, approximately uh, nine years ago, I was in a drunk driving accident. Um, a tragic accident that took the lives of two other people. Uh, one of them I loved very much. Another one was a, a, a beautiful woman that was, uh, you know, cared for deeply from her family. So two beautiful people lost their lives uh, due to me. Uh, and so uh, I'm serving a 32-year sentence right now. There is no way to sugarcoat what landed Carl Cumby behind bars. He destroyed the lives of others. And every day when he stares at family photos on his prison cell wall. Well, this is my daughter and my son and also another picture with my father. He's reminded of how he damaged his own life and the lives of those he loves, too. But a while back, this veteran who served five years in the Navy and once even got a medal for helping save the lives of 12 fellow sailors realized he had a choice. I'm, I have to believe maybe I'm here for a reason and I have to make the best of it in order to uh, make amends for that. That's why he decided to start using his time to help get Sterling Correctional Facilities Veterans Unit off the ground. It's given me uh, purpose and drive that uh, I didn't have for a long time. After uh, the accident, uh, I was lost. I was in shock. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I was basically being warehoused here. I uh, just did my time. How are you doing, sir? Finding a purpose is exactly what the executive director of the Colorado Department of Corrections, Dean Williams, wants for every prisoner here. If you've raised your hand and said, man, my life been a mess. I get it. It's screwed up. Um, that should mean something different. Williams came to Colorado nearly a year ago from Alaska, brought here by Governor Polis to oversee the billion dollar Colorado prison system and to reform it. He says there is a ton of research that shows you get better results when you normalize the prison environment, make it more like the outside and make it less traumatic. One of the guys told me when he was talking to me, I was like, uh, director, this, sometimes I forget and I'm in prison here and I'm like, Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what I want. I'm sure there are those who say um, they should remember they're in prison. They broke the law. This is the, the punishment. What, what do you say? I understand people who have that feeling. I just respectfully disagree, and here's why. Um, there's um, other systems have tried this. We're just going to make prison as harsh as we can possibly make it. The problem with that is this, is that you make the prison more dangerous, not just for the people who are living there, but the staff who have to work here. Um, you end up high, driving higher recidivism rates. You make people worse than the one they got here. In many ways, this veterans unit is a test lab. If you're one of the good guys, it should put you on a different trajectory. If you're one of the knuckleheads who can't Absolutely. figure it out when you're here, yeah, then maybe you're going to do every day. Williams hopes to see other segments of the prison population get some of these same opportunities to change their lives around. And he believes it can be done while still holding prisoners accountable for why they're here in the first place. I can't do anything about the past victimization. It's not dishonoring to those victims uh, to say, hey, that person is here and I don't want them victimizing anybody else. I can't help what happened in the past, but we can help what happens with that person who's here and provide a second chance, 
not a gift, but I mean, but a second opportunity. Treat a man as he is and he'll stay that way. If you give him something to strive for, then he'll strive for it. A second chance Carl is grateful for. He once was proud of himself through hard work here in prison. Just about to complete my uh, associate's degree here in Sterling, and I was asked to be a, a member of Phi Theta Kappa, which is an academic honor society. And with the help of his fellow veterans, he hopes to get some of that pride back again. We don't want to come back, that's the plan. It's pretty simple as, you know, get in here, deal with your issues, get out and stay out. And that's what we help guys do in here. Want to know something about Sterling Correctional Facility? Do you know most of these guys on a first name basis? Uh, we go by last name. Oh, do you? Okay, yeah. Just ask Associate Warden David Sherbar. He can rattle off this prison's biography from memory. Our capacity um, is 2,488 men. We are a multi-custody level facility. We range everything from minimum up to close MCC, which is the highest custody level in the state of Colorado. He knows what kind of men are incarcerated here, and he's seen what it takes for them to succeed when they leave. And when someone gets out, there are three main things they need. They need a roof over their head, they need a job, and they need support. That support part at Unit 32 has been a priority for Sherbarth for the last year and a half. In fact, the Veterans Unit was his idea. Because not only is he a 30-year veteran employee in the Colorado prison system who's seen what works and what doesn't, but also because he's a military veteran himself. You served your country. Do you feel in some small way that this is continued service for you, helping get these guys a second chance? Whether I was a veteran or not, I think everyone in this country, um, quite frankly, I don't care which side of the political aisle you're on, all of us owe every veteran in this country and those that have given the ultimate sacrifice we owe them all thanks for what they've done. All right, sir, as part of our unit... We and he's not the only one here who can relate. The case manager in Unit 32, Janetta Reinick, she's a veteran too. My service, I served in the United States Army as a Black Hawk mechanic for three years. When she heard about the new approach to help military men behind bars, she couldn't wait to be involved. Sign me up. I see some value here. I've already seen some change in the guys, so let's see what we can do with this. When you have staff members and inmates clamoring to be part of something radically different, you know, you must be doing something right. When you get the privilege to go on a journey with one of these guys and actually see the change, I can't express how incredible that is. Just reminding them of what they used to be and what they are capable of helps just kind of propagate this sense of belonging and the camaraderie that you, you see it every day in that unit. Stick around. We'll be right back. Yes, good girl. If you want to improve attitudes, yes, good down, Galway. Having a dog around is a great place to start. Galway, Sterling Correctional Facilities, no exception. Stop. Just ask inmate Anthony Carcel, who spends his days training Galway here as part of the prison's canine companion program that readies dogs here on the inside for families on the outside. Basically, what we do is we do just obedience training and manners training. Anthony has been here at Sterling for the last couple of years, but he's been locked up for a long time. I was convicted of second degree murder back in 2001 so I've been incarcerated for 18 years and in January of 2020 I'll be eligible for community corrections. A Navy veteran, Unit 32 has helped him understand the importance of making the most of every day behind bars so he's ready when he enters the real world. Galway is helping with that. I mean it's given me a skill I've received my master trainer certificate and a lot of experience with dogs I'm very confident in my dog training and it has already opened up a employment opportunity actually upon my release. Funny thing is, Anthony never used to understand how attached people could get to animals like this. Never fully understood the bond between man and dog. Recently, actually about 18 months ago, I told myself, I'm gonna try to love this dog, really love the dog. And I started doing that. I started talking to the dog, laying around, just really receiving the dog's love because they love us. And in turn, it has helped me with my, literally my daughter, our relationship with people in general, with the officers in prison, just overall it's helped me in so many ways that I lacked before. You never know what might change your life, whether it's a dog <laughs> or a building full of like-minded men trying to correct the biggest mistakes of their life in small ways every day.
They served their country and now they are serving time. But from behind the electric fence and those prison bars, these men are finding hope for a future. From inside Sterling Correctional Facility, I'm Jeremy Hubbard. Thanks for joining us.